he is. Wow. Hey guys, it's JT here. Um, I was going for a bit of a run and I came across something pretty cool. So I thought you might want to check it out. Basically, I was here yesterday and there are a ton of king parrots up in the trees flying around. And they're all um, chewing at these yucca leaves and the, the ground here is um, scattered with them. And I had a look down and noticed a few of these little white things. And there are a ton of them. And I wasn't quite sure what it was at first. Thought it might have been some scale or something. Um, and then I realized they were something I'd read a lot about, but never actually seen in person before. And these are lerps, which are like a sort of sugary excretion that uh, various insects produce after consuming eucalyptus sap. Um, there's a whole lot of different types depending on the tree and the insect and I'm going to grab a few, take them home, look under the microscope and see what we can find. Check out the size of that one. Oh yeah. Absolutely massive. As eucalypt species become a popular plantation wood and pest around the world, particularly in the States, um, we're beginning to see psyllid infestations as a real pest. Um, however, not that much is known about them. So we're going to have a look at a few different examples here on a few different ty types of eucalypt leaves, chuck them under the microscope and see what they look like. Apologies for the vertical video guys here, I forgot to Turn it around, but just demonstrating the three different types of lerp we have. One that sort of looks like a ladder, one that's got these fine sort of strings on the top, and the large shields. So we're just chucking them under this microscope and have a look. First we have the um, sort of ladder looking lerp. I believe this one grows on Eucalyptus globular subspecies maidenai. And it's super interesting, even just at 40 times magnification, to see these sugar structures and Interesting that nobody really knows why they have these specific shapes yet. It's believed these structures exist either to increase humidity or as a protection for the insects, and there it is again at a hundred times. In contrast to those ladder lobes, we have here one of the big shield lobes at 40 and now 100 times magnification. This is just a good way to see the different sugar cells uh, as there's no leaf behind them. This is just right on top of the light. And here at 400 times, you can see how detailed they really are. Now, unfortunately, this microscope is designed for really thin slices. I don't know, bits of onion and stuff that you do in Year 7 Science. But what we can find is these super intricate sugar structures. And if I adjust the focus, you can actually focus down the structure and back up to the top. I think that's pretty damn cool. So I'll cut out to what one of these sugar structures looks like from the outside. Um, let's see if I can get another one that hasn't been disturbed as much. There actually might be something moving under that one. Now I sound pretty surprised here because I was not expecting to see this. I thought we were just looking at lerps. There he is. Wow. So that was pretty cool. I was pretty surprised to see that guy there. It was a um, Glycaspis minifera, which is in the family Solodia and sorry the super family Solodia and the family Aphalaridae. So those photos there are from a research paper I will throw in the comments which had a little bit of information about them and I was really able to identify them uh, on a couple of different things so I'm not entirely sure about this ID but those distinct sort of organs you can see under the microscope really help and this is a really common lerp, uh, a really common insect that makes the lerps that we have here with those fine sugar structures that sort of look like a nest 
and that is a bit of a giveaway as to the species, which is found on quite a few different uh, trees, including Minifera, around southeastern Australia. Here we have a few of those same lerps, the uh, light neck structures just without the leaves under them. And you can see a bit more detail, some of the uh, sugar structures where it's just the light going straight onto that lerp without the leaves there. Uh, I couldn't find too much information on siloids and siloidae, the um, family that these insects live within and make the lerps. But quick trip to the library at the Australian National Botanic Gardens here in Canberra gave me this book. Um, by David Hollis, which was produced by the ABRS, who are a, um, the Australian Biological Resources Society. Super helpful and um, useful organisation. Thankfully, these images here, which associate with our lerps, have a corresponding species over on the left. So for this one, number 17, we have Eucalyptolema maidenae. And Maiden Eye is a pretty well-known eucalypt around the region. <coughs> Similarly with Manifera, which we have. Number eight being the little fluffy guys. Uh, Manifera is the scientific name for the brittle gum, uh, which is pretty common around the Canberra region. And sure enough, it's where a lot of these leaves come from, which have a lot of the lobes on them that we're going to look at in here. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you learned a thing or two about lobes. I'll catch you next time.